Praise the Lord, my dear friends. We are on the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Times. And today in the Gospel according to Saint Luke, we see Jesus healing 10 lepers. Interestingly, when they met Jesus and cried out, Master, have mercy on us, Jesus told them to go and show themselves to the priests. We know in the book of Leviticus chapter 14 verses 1 to 32, the Jewish law had made it mandatory for lepers who got healed to show themselves to the priests because it was the priest who was supposed to examine them and then pronounce them as clean. Here, Jesus who himself is God, the source of the law, did not actually require someone else to examine his miracle and to pronounce them as clean. And yet, we see Jesus as a person who respected the Jewish law. Jesus as a person who respected the role of priesthood as existed in the Jewish culture. And we know in today's church, we have priests. And Jesus established a new priesthood and made them administrators of the sacraments. And we know today, in order to benefit from the riches of the church, especially from the sacraments like Holy Eucharist and Confessions and so on, we need the priests. However, sometimes we hear people saying, why should we go to a priest and confess our sins? After all, priests themselves are human beings. Is it not enough to go and confess to the Lord directly? God who is all-powerful, he is able to know us and able to heal us directly. Why should we go through a priest? Today's Gospel passage will give us an answer that the Lord Jesus himself respected the role of the priests in the Jewish culture. How much more will he expect us to respect the role of the priests in the church established by himself? I remember speaking to someone who said, I go for the Holy Mass, I receive communion, and yeah, we need the priests for the sacrament of marriage and so on. But confession, uh, I do it personally with the Lord. I do not need a priest for that. And the Lord understands because he knows me much better than any priest can know. But there is an issue here. See, Catholic faith is not like the online shopping where we add to the cart what we want. And what we do not want, we save for the later or we remove it from the card. Catholic faith is to be accepted as a whole. We can't pick and choose what we want and reject what we do not want. And so, if we claim to have a Catholic identity, then it's important that we also follow the path that is laid out before us as a Catholic in order to attain spiritual growth. And confession becomes a very important part in it. And there are some others who say, originally, in the beginning, there was no private confessions. Going to a priest for making confession came much later into the church. So why should we go to a priest? Originally, people would make public confessions. They would all share their sins aloud and the priest would forgive them in common. There is one thing that we need to understand. Even in the beginning of the church, when people would all make the public confession, the forgiveness was granted only when the priest pronounced the words of absolution. So, a person who says that he can go directly to God because in the beginning there was no private confessions forgets the fact that forgiveness of sin is obtained by the words of absolution pronounced by the priest. And another point that we can notice from today's gospel is that it was when those ten lepers started their journey towards the temple to meet the priest that they found that they were healed. It was not that after they got healed, they decided to go to the temple. They believed what the Lord said and then acted upon it even before they saw the result. That is something we can learn as well. When we pray for something, it's possible that we might receive it immediately or we might receive it much later. But our life of faith should not be affected by the results that we get from the prayer. Another interesting point that we can learn from today's reading, our life of faith is not just limited to the observation of the commandments alone. We see the ton of them found themselves healed as they were on their way to the temple. But one of them came back and Jesus asked him, Were there not ten who got healed? Where are the nine? 
we see that Jesus actually was interested in seeing all the ten of them coming back. Note that Jesus wanted to receive gratitude or praises, but he wanted to establish a personal relationship with them. Now, it is this one who is a Samaritan who, upon realizing that he got healed, felt the need to establish a personal connection, a personal relationship with Jesus. And to him, Jesus said, your faith has saved you. So not only the physical healing that really mattered there, a personal close relationship with Jesus is something that can actually save us. And gratitude for the blessings received is the key to begin this personal relationship with God. This particular person was so grateful that he got healed and he came back to the Lord for that interaction with him. And that's what we see in the first reading as well. We see that Naaman got healed because he was willing to follow the command of the Lord that was told to him through prophet Elisha. And upon realizing that he got healed, he came back to the prophet and wanted to offer him gifts. Of course, the prophet did not accept the gifts, but at the end we see Naaman saying, From now on, your servant shall not offer burnt offering to any other gods but to the Lord. He started a new relationship with the Lord there and then. And what prompted him to start that relationship? It was his gratitude for the blessings received from the Lord. So dear friends, we too can keep these two things in mind. The first thing, it's important that we follow the rules and regulations that are given to us for our own spiritual growth. Secondly, just the observance of rules and regulations alone is not enough. We need to have a personal relationship with the Lord. And the key to this personal relationship with the Lord is our awareness of the blessings that we have received from the Lord. So let us all look into ourselves and see the wonderful blessings that we have received from the Lord and spend some time in silence thanking the Lord for everything that he has done for us. Like the psalmist who says, I will thank the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be on my lips. In Psalm 34 verse 1. May God bless each one of us.